How has everyone pulled up after that uh, opening game, just first of all? Yeah, the, physically we pulled up pretty well. Um, mentally, a little bit bruised from the first half, but really excited from the second half, so now we're going good. Has that been a, a bit of a focus this week, the, the start, the first 30 minutes, and, and not repeating what happened at Eden Park? Yeah, I mean, again, mentally, yes, but also there's some technical things we probably didn't nail in there as well, so it's been a bit of a focus on that today. Sarah, heading into Wales this week, you know, with that first game out of the way, and I suppose everything that came with it, right? The sold out crowd, all the atmosphere and, and the fanfare, is it almost easier to, to kind of focus on the game at hand this week? Yeah, I think so. I think it probably gets in that we narrow our focus a little bit more. Obviously, last week was about um, the occasion and starting well, and then this week is actually about just getting into our work and nailing our core roles. Well, uh, you Wayne said he was up till 1am watching the replay of that second half straight after the match. Um, did you do similar, or when did you catch the, the replay? Yeah, I think we all did similar. He only watched the first half, I watched both halves. <laughs> I, otherwise I couldn't sleep. <laughs> um, but yeah, similar here. You spoke about technical stuff that needs to be fixed, or that you're working on to fix. What, can you tell us a little bit more about that? What is the focus? Yeah, look, I think, um, you know, our set piece probably needs to be tidied up a little bit. I mean, we didn't provide any lights, we do any uh, real aggression in our defence, so probably just tidying those two areas up will give us a better start, I think, next one. Do you think there was more mental than anything else? Yeah, 100% I do, but like I said, there's also technical little things that will help us get into that and make sure we've got all, all got clarity. Part of the mental is having clarity, so particularly on defence, if you, uh, it's hard to go out fast in the line if you're not sure where everyone else is, so we just have to tidy up on a few things. Sarah, um I know you're not playing this weekend, but you went to school with Amy Cocaine, is that right? Yeah. Uh, what's it like, I suppose, to be in a World Cup, same World Cup as someone that you went to fielding high, is that correct? Yeah, it's awesome, obviously, um, with uh, Georgia Ponsonby here in my team and then Amy in the, in the English team. It's just, it's awesome for fielding, it's awesome for Rob Jones, and um, can't wait to catch up with her and her family, to be honest. Have you talked to her yet? No, nah, I haven't, no. Nah. Sarah, well, yeah. Yeah, 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 probably. What did you make of the uh, Welsh game, the nail biter, and how do you sort of see them getting into this weekend? Um, well, firstly, I think it was expected how the result went, so it was similar to earlier in the year, so a lot of stuff we expected to see. I think they'll be maybe a little bit disappointed in how their set piece went, so I'm expecting they'll probably put a real emphasis on that and probably come out firing. And like Smithy always sees, you know, he's been to a few World Cups now, teams always they put a bit extra in there when it's a World Cup, and particularly against us. So. Probably expecting a little bit of fire and brimstone as well. If you look back on that opening game, I mean, was it ideal in many ways? And you got a bit of a wake up call, you got shown how tight this team it could be, and then you sort of managed to get out of jail? 100% it's the best thing for us, I think. Uh, we got exposed in a couple of the areas, so it's great that we see that now. Um, but we still came away with four, four or five points, so perfect, perfect start, really. Where's Wayne talked about making changes for this weekend and for these next pool games? How do you balance? Yeah, need to carry on what you did well in the second half, but also give some other people around as well. Yeah, like I said, it comes down to that clarity. So I mean, we've got to be in a position where if we had to make changes later in the tournament, that people are able to make those changes quickly. So it's a good time for us to practice that. Um, but yes, there is a balance between getting a little bit of cohesion and momentum going as well. So yeah, we're trying to, we're trying to get the balance right ourselves. You spoke there's been a lot of focus on what went wrong in that first 30 minutes or what didn't go right. but. A lot of things went right after that. What, have you looked at what, what did go right and what stood out in that sense? I'm about to run a session this afternoon on some of our defence, and um, you know I think once we got some of our defence going, the first try actually came from a turnover. So um, you know what, if we can if we can nail that area and put a bit more pressure on the set piece in particular, like we did in the second half, our, our second half set piece has way better, then I think you know the game will become easier for us. Sarah, we talked to Wiz about debriefing and watching it back, but have the players sat down and watched it back together and what have you guys taken away from that? Yeah, like we've been given clips that we need to focus on, but I think it was just a, um, actually individual um, ownership to nail our own roles and probably a couple of mistakes in the first half allowed us to be on defence, allowed us to keep going backwards, so it's pretty easy to kind of look at yourself and think what do I need to do better to make sure the team's better. Sarah, just talk about the occasion. You've obviously played in massive tournaments, both 15s and, and 7s. Can you draw on that experience and do you look to draw on that experience that you've had to even maybe help some of the players in the squad that maybe aren't used to this? Yeah, like we, we talked about it a lot um, and we knew that we wanted to come out and show our fans the exciting brand of rugby that we're, we're trying to do at trainings and things like that. So 
Um, and I know that like my role is about helping the people around me, um, but for them to have that experience at Eden Park is going to be the best thing for, for them moving forward. We obviously then go to Waitakere, um, which I hear is sold out or something like that, of 10,000 people. So like the best thing that we can do is enjoy it, um, but then play to the best of our ability and then the fans will keep coming back. Sarah, one of the things that sort of, um, apart from the game, is the sort of the haka, the, the, I guess that, that, that sort of occasion that was, how was that sort of um, you know, performing the haka the way you did um, in front of the Soviet Park and Soviet? That would be um, yeah, one of the most special things that I've done in my career to be a part of the haka, um, but also the, the surrounding crowd cheering on the haka and um, like our our leaders in that space to put a lot of work and effort into it to make sure that we're, we're all really on and um, I think we really nailed that but yeah I think it kind of got me a little bit nervous to be honest. It's probably the one thing you, know, you don't want to um, bugger up before the test match. And the other thing that's probably stood up in the crowd is that something that you could hear from the, on the field and, and, and if so you know, what, how did that kind of um, resonate with the um, yeah, probably during the test match it was probably something I didn't really look at or focus on but as soon as the game was finished that's all of my family um, and the crowd could talk about is how amazing um, the poi were, um, something that they want to continue on and yeah I know that there was a lot of feedback on that so yeah just really awesome that people are getting behind it and um, really encouraging that. Is that us? Amazing, thanks Thank you. Thank you.